welcome to another episode of Dos Naps Cinco's, episode number 86. Uh, this week we cover Black Widow as part of our movie of the week. But before we get into it, as always, I'm your host, David. And I am Stuart. And bark, 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 bork. <laughs> yeah, hold on one <laughs> second. Bork, 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 bork. I'm just going to pause it really quick. There we go. Oh, Aren't they can we rough? change that? Or can we change our name to the Rough Stream? <laughs> the Rough Stream. R U F F. Yeah. R U F F Stream. Yeah. Can we change it to that? I think we, there's enough dog dogs between. between the, there's definitely enough dogs between the three of our uh, households to do that. Yeah. We'll just record with the dogs in our room and see what, <laughs> what wins. Our just movie have a stranger analysis. come over to Ben's house, and then Zucchini will just be constantly barking. <laughs> Actually, we should just mess with him and just order stuff for DoorDash at his door. Just ring the doorbell. Oh, no. People keep ordering me Popeyes. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. It's not going to be terrible. stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly hope it doesn't continue. <laughs> All right. But, so besides the movie of the week this week, Black Widow, what else did you guys see? Ben? I finally got caught up on Mythic Quest. Uh, I finished out the whole season. Uh, David, did you get a chance to finish it or get caught up no. on it? Or... Mm-hmm. Just like come I out. just found out that Blacklist just finished, so we're trying to get caught up on that. Oh, okay. Well, Blacklist. I'm definitely not going to give any spoilers. Oh, how nice of you, Ben. Yeah. Ah, how but generous anyways, of you. So when Rob McElhenney dies... <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! See, now you ruined it for Stu because Stu was thinking about watching it. I kept oh pitching word, it to him all weekend. I was like, hey, season one is out. Give it a try. You know, your favorite character. He's going to probably stick around. Rob McElhinney is going to be there. And <laughs> now sure, you David. just killed him off. Whatever now he's say. got no reason to watch it. Yeah, sure, David. I'll give it a, a watch. Wink, wink. Yeah. Uh, I did really enjoy the the second season. I do really hope they make a third season or Rob McElhenney doesn't get distracted by other stuff because I really... It's okay. Think... What if he gets distracted by Always Sunny? I think that Don't it's you dare Sunny. Say it. Don't you dare. Don't blame... <laughs> don't blame Rob McElhenney. Blame Danny DeVito. <laughs> well, no. Okay, well. Assuming, not, assuming there's nothing, nothing in the real life that would prevent it mm-hmm. what would you know i feel like always sunny it was an acceptable distraction i i think so too it's just that realistically assuming I don't know. ben assuming. you didn't you have to <sighs> agree to the premise assuming nothing happens then yes what if rob mcelhenny wants to go fat mac again what if what if... that'd be fine I don't his think heart he can't ever take wants it. to go his back. Heart, to his heart can't. <laughs> yes. It's not Danny DeVito. Died. It was Rob McElhenney. You watch out for Rob, really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you all haven't got caught up on uh, Mythic Quest. You don't tell me what good. to do. Yeah, okay, if fine. you haven't gotten David, caught, caught up, up Ben's threatening to spoil it next week. Just saying. No, I'm just threatening to spoil it for you, David. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I got to go get all of it. I got to go finish watching it. Okay. Um, what about you, Stuart? I started watching the animated Resident Evil show on Netflix, Infinite Darkness. Ooh. Um, it's Wesker's okay. Daughter's I, daughter's I'm only apparently I I only got like two episodes in, but I was talking to Sean about it, and apparently it's only like four episodes long. <laughs> uh, and for, also from what I've read, they do a lot of flashbacks into previous episodes, I guess, to, like, eat up airtime. Uh, so I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were planning with this show. We're like, we only have 40 minutes of real footage. Just make sure to stretch yeah, every chop episode Chop it up into, out. into five hours, a five-hour <laughs> series. Um, Remember last week when we went yeah. back in time again to go see this thingy again? <laughs> do they do, like, flashbacks of, this, of like, previous events in the same episode? <laughs> Um, I don't think remember in the same the be- episode, no. <laughs> remember at the be- opening credits? Remember earlier, this like happened. five minutes ago? <laughs> actually, you know what? That might not be true. They might have actually flashed back to, into the same episode. <laughs> so I don't know what they were thinking, what, the, what Netflix uh, was doing, but apparently 
Um, I don't know apparently, if they did too good of a job with this. Apparently, the only thing that they're doing is just throwing money at at people and just saying yeah. that sounds like a oh, good project. They're probably like, oh no, we we put all of our focus into the show that everyone really wants, which is the one about Wesker's daughters and where you know, does real that live action into the into what? like the game where does that factor in nowhere into, like the game <laughs> at all that doesn't exist wait wesker has a daughter wesker has well they're saying daughters. wesker has daughters who's the mom i don't know so they're making it up petrie for the for the, the ada for the show they're making Is it, it up. Ada? No, no not ada or jill please god no. them. is it the nemesis above. None yes. of the above. I wish it were Nemesis, but it's not. It's gonna be. I don't know. I, I, I have a feeling it's gonna be like a like a CW style like young adult drama show with that's tangentially related to Resident Evil. It's Chris. So, oh, don't even joke about that. They fuse the DNA of Wesker and Chris together. Yeah, and some freak accident happened, and now they're. And now they're they now it's now it's t- my two dads meets uh, <laughs> Full House. Uh, Wait, so when did Wesker get interested in Chris? Was it after he saw how good he was fisting at that boulder? I think it was ever since the first game. They've always had the hots for each other. I mean, who didn't have the hots for Wesker? <laughs> I mean, that intro movie. You did you see it? that intro movie? Have you seen his hair mm. and his sunglasses? Ooh, ooh, got to cool down here. <laughs> oh, the uh, pants okay. are already off. Yeah, <laughs> but be further um, off. Aside from that, I did watch the Tomorrow War. Ah, okay. What, were you, what did you think? It was not bad. Uh, I didn't. It was. It was. It was. It was pretty good. It wasn't great, but it was pretty good. How was the gunplay? Uh, well, I don't know which one of you mentioned it last week. Was it you or or Me. David? Oh. Um, I think what they did made sense for what was happening in the movie. Uh, even though I did, I thought what was happening in the movie was kind of silly, <laughs> but, uh, what, is, that, alien invaders in a future far, far away and then sending people back to, well, to, and then sending people then forward, forward who have no experience. So that, that part I was fine with. Uh, I did. I will. I will say this about the movie. I think I thought it was a better uh, family-oriented movie than Fast and Furious. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good family, uh, family vibes oh, in uh, the Tomorrow true. War. Yeah, and well, they don't. Know, they don't shove down the word family to yeah. you a half a dozen times just to make sure you know that. Hey, this entire thing's about family. Hey, yo, what the this, fuck was that? Hey, yo, I this future war, it's about family. Why are you all Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> That's all I can do. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. If you didn't say anything, me and Stu are vibing Vin yeah, Diesel here. We're okay? doing Sylvester Stallone as Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, I guess it was more like uh, Sylvester Vin- Stallone as Rocky as Vin Diesel. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Yo, hey, yo, 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 Finn. <laughs> I'm walking here. I'm sorry. Did I you can't. say Finn Wait, like from, uh, from Guardians? Did you just say fucking I'm walking? <laughs> All right. We're just going to keep moving you're forward Christopher here. Walken or you're doing Christopher Walken now? No, I wish I could you're do You're doing that, Robert but... De Niro? What are we doing? <laughs> what was that? Oh, I think that was, yeah, that was uh, always sunny. <laughs> I'm walking. I'm walking. They're like, what? You're doing Christopher walking now? <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else is going on. Uh, Loki has one more episode left. So, Ooh, Stu, we're almost uh, to the point where you get to watch all six episodes, and we can all kind of talk about it. Um, all right. All right. It's kind of getting interesting, just a little bit. But uh, let's see what else is going on. If nothing, then we'll go ahead and. <laughs> jump over to our box office rundown for the week. Um, I know that you guys both uh, had said that you thought Black Widow would be higher than Fast 9. Am I correct in that? Yep. 
And you guys are both correct. Black Widow Hooray. opens at number one with $80 million. David and, owes his chicken sandwiches. Yep. Woo. Number two. Uh, I think, Ben, you need to send chicken sandwiches. To Why do I need to send them? Why? You lost the bet. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck, David? How what? does this work? What kind of backwards Taiwanese <laughs> betting is this? <laughs> well, if you guys had taken advantage of the lightning bet round. And... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, um, David's David's gonna get us on all those all those technical gambling rules. Oh yes, yeah, right, right parlay. You paid <laughs> in even numbered bills, yeah. so See, that because the odds of the bet were twenty five under the spread, uh, <laughs> that means that the lightning bets that you made. See, I don't, I don't know, David. And because I guess. it's daylight savings. <laughs> yeah. And the winter solstice. <laughs> uh, that mean that makes the inverts the bet. So. You... <laughs> You place the uh, you place the bet at the betting window under daylight savings. That's an hour early. Unfortunately, those are not available at that time. So those are all invalid at this point. So I, I don't I think know I'm enough mine. about betting no, to I'm dispute sure. this. So yeah. I guess he's right. Yeah, I'll just take the two piece meal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, number two, F nine, the Fast Saga with eleven point four. Number three, the Boss Baby Family Business with eight. Woo. Number four, the Forever Purge with seven million. Number five, A Quiet Place Part Two with three point one. Cruella at number six with two point three. Number seven, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. 1.6 million. Number eight, Peter Rabbit Two, The Runaway. Number nine, The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. And number ten, Zola with six hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. All I know is this is in the top five. You said that you were wondering how long F nine was going to stay in the top five, right, Stu? Uh, I guess I was I was projecting a, a long time. Nine months? Uh, nine months? Not nine nine oh, nine weeks? Twelve is weeks? Is that a lot? Sure. Fifteen? I don't know. I don't have a number. I'll just know it when I hear it. <laughs> damn it's a long time i don't know whenever that is uh ben did you get a chance to watch all the boss babies like you wanted uh, to i got caught up on the first season <laughs> <laughs> the first the only person only season you don't know that yet <laughs> <laughs> it's true they, they may have greenlit another one who knows um guys any comments questions concerns Mm, nah. No. Nah. All right. Let's go over to our movie of the week this week Black Widow. Uh, Stu, can you do us the honors, please? Okay. Hey, remember the Avenger from Endgame? Spoiler alert, she died. Uh, Black Widow. Everyone likes Black Widow because everyone likes Scarlett Johansson. Well, guess what? She's back here in an origin story. Not really an origin story because it happens in between some of the movies. Uh, but anyways, uh, she's gonna go on the run and meet up with her old crew, who's actually <laughs> her family. Uh, her, uh, and she, oh man, there's so many family themes going on. Um, <laughs> but she's gonna link up with her sister and go after Ooh. the group of bad guys who done did to them what made them into the, what they were. Uh, <laughs> Which were Black Widows, uh, which uh, yeah, and then uh, David Arbor will be there, and and uh, and what's her name from the Mummy will be there. Uh, what's her name? Rachel Weiss. Rachel Weiss. Weiss. That, there you go. Um, she'll be there too. And then introducing, I don't know the actress who played her sister, but she was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, and the, then they'll have a family romp. Through uh, the MCU, and uh, that that's it. End of, end of synopsis. Excellent, thank you, Stu. Uh, is it pronounced Poog or Pug? Florence Pug. Or Florence Poo. 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 Is the G is that guy? Oh, Florence is that Poo. the sister? Yeah, yeah. Girl from Midsommar. Florence. Poo. Oh, the annoying one. Uh, well, I mean, she was the only lady. Or she's the only lady. <laughs> so I'm yeah, gonna so, go with so yes. yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Wow, that uh that movie Midsommar really left a sour taste in your mouth, Stu. Oh no, my boyfriend's under some kind of mind control that caused him to cheat on me. I'm so angry at him personally. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. wait. There's a crossover then. What? In this movie, there's also a mind control. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, now, how'd she like it being mind controlled? It's not so fun, is it? Having a bunch of old ladies surround you while you're banging someone. Yeah, wait, what? Did that did not happen somewhere? in this movie. Okay, that's uh, all right. You um, didn't see Midsommar. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could literally say anything and it'd be like, oh, that mm-hmm. sounds yeah. interesting. <laughs> Did and you I did, and anything. and as much as you might believe, think that was a, a made up thing, like a, you know, like when I say things that sound like they're true but they're not, uh, that is true. That happened in the movie. That was not an exaggeration, <laughs> unfortunately. Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll start off with you, Ben. Uh, thoughts and score. Well, we we finally got the backstory that everyone's been asking for. No, begging for. It's It's been a long time coming. Like um, Fans have been asking Kevin Feige over and over again for the story, and he finally caved in. But not with just a TV show, you know, like Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision. No, he, he actually turned this into a full-length film, which was pretty damn amazing. And it really does take a deep dive, and quite honestly, I didn't expect so many twists and turns on how this all came to be. I really got to say it was pretty satisfying. And going into Infinity 4, it does feel very rewarding knowing what you do after finishing this film. So, yes, I really do think that the origin story of Black Widow's best in Infinity War was what we've been waiting for. The rest of it was really hit and miss. <laughs> okay, so what, what is your So, like, story? you mean like the first five minutes of the movie? <laughs> or... Hey, that it, it spread out throughout the whole movie. I mean, maybe that whole backstory was maybe five minutes long, but damn, it really had questions, you know, that got you going. It was like so a you're saying was like, where'd, they, you, where'd you get that vest? <laughs> <laughs> they could have accomplished this with a 20-minute YouTube video, and they extended it to a full feature-length film. Uh, and so how, how are you rating this, Ben? I mm. <laughs> okay. Well, to go over the actual parts of the movie, I I do think it's one of those MCU films that I kind of wish wasn't in the MCU. Like, um, oh, kind of like a Joker isn't technically part of like the DC universe. Ki- kind of. I mean, if it was going to be an origin story, I wish they leaned more into that. Except, but they made it like this weird stopgap. Wait, are you talking about the origin story for Black Widow or origin story for Black Widow's vest? Why not both? Why not both? Uh, <laughs> well, they're both kind of intertwined, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are one and the same. One cannot <laughs> exist without the other. Uh, no, I'm it's talking like, about Black Widow. You can't Widow. have pockets without a vest, and you can't have vests without pockets. Letty did say that it was that is something she relates to quite a bit. You know, women's clothing and pockets. It just oh. doesn't exist. It does not exist. Hey, uh, talk to talk to whoever designs women's clothing. I don't know. You mean big pockets? Yeah, big no, pockets. No, they need <laughs> I love women need to wear big tactical pocket. pants. <laughs> tactical mm. pants have many pockets. Well, you can't they can't because big pocket, you know? Big pocket big, big runs po- the industry. That big that big pocket money, you know. <laughs> special interest groups, big the big pocket special interests. <laughs> uh like this this movie felt kind of weird because the parts of the story that are like tied directly to MCU territory felt a bit forced, I guess. Um, like the Taskmaster storyline, the uh, the story about the other Black Widows, Hawkeye, Budapest, all those were okay, but I didn't really care too much about them, honestly. And the movie didn't really <sighs> make me want to care. You know, it, it just kind of moved on, and it was like, oh, it kind of just threw it at your face, and it's like, okay, this is what happened, and I was like, okay, cool. Um, now, when we focus on Black Widow's family, though, I think that's where the movie really does start to get moving. And it's not just that, like, uh, Florence Pooh, David Harbour, Rachel Weisz, and ScarJo could have easily just held each scene on their own. I think it's because they had a lot of chemistry with each other, and when the fam- all the family was in the same room, it did feel like I was getting pulled in. It was really interesting seeing all their their dynamics between each other, each combination of them, like one-on-one had something unique to offer but when we get them all in the same room it felt like there was just so much energy and so much charisma and it was really charming and it really kind of sucks that there was so little of it you know i mean there are i want to say like one third of the movie was uh, focusing on that but then the rest of the movie comes along and it's just you know paper thin and just kind of 
it does its job. It's okay. Um, and I, I will say that this is a much better family film than Fast Nine. <laughs> <laughs> See, gonna... I, told, I told you. <laughs> if we're gonna, if... you know, if we're gonna lean into this, you know, fucking, you know, family dynamic. Yeah, the family <laughs> dynamic. You're a family. You know, the Infinity Stones are one thing, but family. <laughs> <laughs> Families are forever. <laughs> Uh, a very light seven out of ten, most of which comes not really from the action, but or the MCU storyline, but from the family, from family, family, family. What, hey, what uh... acts... what? <laughs> <laughs> Stop questioning it. You're ruining. I'm You're not ruining questioning it. Just go with it. Just, just I'm accept. with him. Just accept it. <laughs> just lay back and accept it. All right. What about you, Stu? Um. Yeah, definitely uh, the same kind of boat. Maybe not with so many details, but uh, I I definitely enjoy. I think the best parts of this movie were basically any part that had uh, Black Widow interacting with her sister or with uh, her quote unquote dad. Because um, I mean, honestly, and to be completely honest, my favorite parts of this movie were when when David Arbor was talking. Um, <laughs> so. So yeah, but um, as far as like MCU stuff goes, is like, and and I was I kind of was mentioning this the other day, but I was like, I really wish that moving forward in some of the MCU movies, they just throw throw us a bone to like the like the characters from before, like Iron Man and Captain America. Throw us a throw us a freaking bone here, please. Just like you know more so than just like oh reference them but like show it show us something give us give us something um you know just even if it's a post if the post credit or if it's just some kind of i don't know just something a sound bite a video clip i don't know but uh i wish they would do that but uh an action I guess, figure maybe yeah but like moving forward uh or yeah just you know the whole movie was you know kind of it was okay um, as far as the action and the, I mean, the action was, is what you're going to get out of a Marvel movie. I feel like these days, um, I mean, it has this like big set piece CGI stuff, which is all fine and well. Uh, I was disappointed by some of the fight scenes, um, but I'll get it. We can get into that more later, but overall it was, it was all right. I'll give it like a seven. Okay. Uh, for me, I'll start off with the overall score. Um, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's wow. partially because there's two parts to look it. Look who's so, been over here. No, it's yeah, because if you look at it from like the action standpoint, I really liked all that stuff. Um, the action sequences and just like the choreography I thought was really well done. Uh, cinematography was done also really well. So that I will, I'll give it like eight and a half, nine on that side. But in terms of like the story, kind of like what Ben was talking about, there's a lot of like very loose linkages. Um, and I think it's just this fundamental change that hap- has happened over at Marvel that Kevin Feige's talking about, which is they don't dole out these really big contracts anymore. They're really trying to kind of refocus um, the MCU away from the mainstays, right? Your Captain Americas, your, your, uh, your Iron Man your Hulk, your Thor, those guys, and trying to pull focus away from those guys. And then instead of doling out these really large contracts, they're kind of like shoe, like shoehorning people into these roles for much smaller segments. And I guess because they didn't like the fact that the last, uh, what, phase three, Robert Downey Jr. was like kind of commanding quite a lot of money to be able to to do a film and so they didn't want to be stuck in that position again so they fundamentally have changed their focus when it comes to marvel i guess they have already gotten to the point where it's like you know the people who are already hooked on marvel stuff they'll come watch it anyways we only want people who want to play marvel characters to be a part of the marvel universe and so they're issuing out i think it's only like one or two films and it's like much lower in terms of like dollar amount so it they're less they're not i don't want to say the word pandering but that's probably the closest thing i can think of but they're not really well they're not really giving the people what they want anymore just because of the fact that they're focused more on trying you're to, gonna uh, pay for it and you're gonna like it yeah they're it's kind of like that where they're maximizing their dollar by going well if we can get rid of scarlett johansson as black widow because 
you know, someone said it during the uh, our synopsis. Unfortunately, she's dead. If you haven't watched Endgame, sorry. I said um, spoilers. Yeah. Um, it, you know, she's not around anymore. So I think her, Thor, and then I think, I don't know what Chris Pratt's contract looks like, but some of these guys are not going to be kind of like part of the big one like all the big movies that are coming out for uh for phase four so they're definitely changing the way they're doing things and so for that they kind of this was like their last ditch effort to kind of give us the things that we're asking for right they talk about budapest and what ends up happening they kind of talk about the black widows in general they introduce some of these other characters who were they're probably fringely involved in terms of like the overall mcu we have no idea what they're planning on doing it right because we had this really big bad that they had fought for a long long time in phase three thanos right uh loki and now we have i have no idea who they're fighting next right it's not like we're going to see modok right um you don't know right? that Patton oswald could definitely- come on okay <laughs> modok would be an excellent phase four villain i'm just throwing that out there but I think for me, the thing that was disappointing for me was the loose ends, the, like the loose tie-ins to some of the things. And then when they teased something that was going to give us an idea of what was what we'd been asking for, right? The pocket reference and the vests and stuff. And then the stuff about Budapest, we literally just went over it probably 45 seconds. And then the, we got right back to the rest of the movie. And I was just like great like what's happening and then we didn't get a chance to really dive deeper into you know black widow's like past right the way that the trailer kind of shows so for me that to me is like more like a three so if you average them out that gives you about a six also for some i don't know if this is just me or not but rachel weiss's uh like accent kept dropping off and i could never i don't know that just kept breaking it for me i don't know if that was consistent with what you guys found but for me that was one of the things that kind of broke the immersion for me i was just like wait what's happening so so yeah no i I, it's for me it's a six but uh yeah i wish we this this uh movie had a little bit more weight but um but uh florence poo was really really good so i'm i'm glad that um, she was a part of it she definitely helped uh kind of move the movie along a lot of the scenes that were she and scarlet were in the same uh same room or the same scene that those were the ones that really carried the the film or else this would have been a much lower score in general. All righty. Um, I'm, I'm worried that, or I'm not worried, but because it's not really my concern, but I have a feeling (laughs) that uh, once, once Marvel, if that's really the case where Marvel is trying to shorten up like actor contracts and Mm -hmm. stuff and all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to me, I feel like RDJ was one of the reasons that made one of the things that made the Marvel movies so appealing, so attractive to general audiences was just because of his, you know, his just his, you know, his swagger on screen. I think that's what attracted a lot of people to it. But to 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 go forward and just like do these kind of piecemeal things where it's like, we'll do one or two movies here with these random characters that nobody knows. I mean, how, how long do you think they can distance themselves from the mainstays of the Marvel universe before they have to come back to them? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think a lot of it is that the story is starting to get away from the mainstays of the first place, you know, like Thor, he's, the um, get, he's getting replaced with Natalie Portman, Iron Man. He is dead, <laughs> you know, no, spoilers. <laughs> Captain America's dead. Spoilers. Sorry. Um, no, he's just old. <laughs> Wait, why did you say it the opposite direction? <laughs> <laughs> In case someone's Let's name all the characters, your beloved Hulk. characters that are all dead now. Oh, Hulk is spoiler old. alert. Spoilers. Uh, um, who else is there? Who else is a mainstay? Oh, yeah. Scarlett Johansson. She went to Budapest. Spoilers. Uh, Hawkeye. He... I don't think you know how spoilers work, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Hawkeye, he's got a TV show. Spoilers, you know, like um, I, I do think that. A Wait, lot he has of, a TV show? Yeah, he's got. He actually does have a TV show. Oh, that is actually yep, a spoiler. It just got. It, that is a extra spoiler that just got released recently. That there will be a Hawkeye TV show. I mean, that wasn't recent. That was like, I mean, if you consider two years or for three years recent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's Hawkeye. I mean, anything that gets announced for that's technically still shocking, even today. 
And my uh, my main thing is my main question was how in as far as general audiences are concerned, how many how much how what percentage of them are going to be familiar with whatever the more obscure Marvel characters are if they start pumping out movies about them? I, I think that they are banking on the fact that they have so much momentum now that they have a little more free reign to go in a, a weirder direction, which I'm I'm kind of excited about because that could possibly mean like more projects similar to I don't know, like kind of like Loki. I know they were trying, kind of dipping their toes into the idea of doing Loki, and I, I like the overall idea. I'm going to reserve my judgment until the final episode comes out. Mm-hmm. But so overall, like so far, I like the direction they're going. Um, but if all the rumors are true about Doctor Strange and it being like the first true like horror Marvel movie. And it's being directed by Sam Raimi, you That's know, awesome. and it has like a lot of hype going into it, like a lot of rumors circling around it. And if they all pan out to be true, like that would be fucking awesome because it, yep. it is really fucking weird. And I don't think if they, if they released this earlier, it would have really stuck because, you know, they didn't really have much of a reputation to them. There wasn't know? as and much but, of like a runway or a like a, I, I can kind of see what you're talking about, Ben, like where there's not this like red carpet that's been rolled out. If we all yeah. of a sudden just got smashed in the face with Doctor Strange and the multi, like what was it called, the multiverse or whatever? Yeah, multiverse um, of madness. Yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden we got cha- we got this like complete change of like tone, right? Because a lot of a lot of these movies all are very family friendly, family oriented, right? And it's just like, mm-hmm. hey, like bringing these this previous young gener- this older generation who grew up with the comic books had their kids and then brought their kids to these movies and got them to fall in love with Mar- with with Iron Man, Captain America and stuff like that. And now they're definitely trying some other things. It, I can kind of see why you would get excited, but uh to to kind of uh put something uh, of substance in there. Um it this comes from uh one of the IGN reports from a couple days ago uh that Feige explains that Marvel's moving away from the mass of multi movie deals at once offered to its stars instead he hinted that the talent will stay on board and return for additional projects if they're enthusiastic about the universe they'd become a part of without needing an, an expense like an expansive contract so essentially it just like, kind of boils down to is if this if this actor is committed to this particular role and like the development of their character they're willing to, essentially they're willing to take a lower contract right because they want to be a, that character or whatever so that's kind of like where they've uh, kind of gone i mean i can see that working out for one or two movies and then as soon as that person that actor or actress becomes fate or like you know blows up from it then they're going to start commanding more money i think that's just how the business works but come on shang chi in the nine the, ring <laughs> ten ring. but like I think part of the reason why the, the the first three phases of the MCU worked so well was because they were able to maintain the same actors across the movies. Mm-hmm. If we have other here, if we're moving forward, if we have a different actor playing the same character every other movie, every you know one one to two movies, I don't think it's going to be as appealing to fan to general audiences. Maybe like Marvel fans will still, you know, they'll buy anything that's that Marvel spits out but i don't know if i don't know if general audiences will will be following along the way i look at uh go ahead ben oh well um well it might not be so much that we're gonna get we're gonna continue seeing like um like series of movies for just one character it might be that um if we look at like the release schedule right now like for the pre-existing characters we have they're trying to tie it looks like you know they're giving them the the spider-man threes the uh the black panther twos you know like they're they're continuing those series but for all the brand new heroes after that who knows like we might not be getting eternals yeah like we who knows if there's going to be an or eternals too who knows if there's going to be a miss marvel too who knows like um, they might go in a different direction. Maybe it's going to be more collaborative movies where it's like a collection of them or just like general stories about Marvel heroes doing something together, you know. Um, maybe that's what the the, the story means. Um, e- either way, I do think that the um, 
this new contract deal is beneficial for everyone involved. You know, like Marvel isn't completely tied to one actor for a given amount of time. And that actor is free to pursue other projects during that time. They're not like married to this contract where they have to keep their schedule open just for Marvel stuff. Like they're free to do whatever the fuck they want, like later on, you know, who knows? I'm, I'm willing to see where this goes. <laughs> I don't think we really have much of a choice, Ben. I I do. I I am a stakeholder. (laughs) I have invested so much of my money into this Marvel franchise. Not again, Ben. (laughs) What's the worst that can happen? Guys, guys, I'm 10 million. You said I could buy a piece of Marvel. All I have to do is buy one of these stocks. Just a quick 1 million from you guys. I got to pay some debts off. They're going to take my thumbs. (laughs) Uh, the the thing that kind of uh, parallels really closely with the way that this is going is, uh, Ben, you also watched Game of Thrones, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. Remember how in, how many seasons did we get out of Game of Thrones? Was it eight. seven? Eight? eight. We, we seven, did first really. six, you said seven. It was really seven, yeah. but I mean, it was kind of, kind of like how Breaking Bad was like, it was five seasons, oh, but it was half like half. four. Okay, okay. So we got like seven that. seasons worth, we'll just do this. Seven seasons worth of episodes. Up until the end of season six, everything is canon, correct? Like there's a book that's tied to kind of like the events of it. What I feel yeah. like is phases one through three are kind of like that. The, the first six seasons of Game of Thrones where everything, there's a book behind it. There's some, there's source material you can reference. And there's kind of like, we want it to see, but we want to see it played out in like live action, Right. Mm-hmm. Now we've kind of moved into this portion where it's kind of like all these writers get to decide whatever they want to do. And the fear I have is the way season seven slash eight ended for for Game of Thrones. And the I don't know what the uh, like if it was critically received really, really well for Game of Thrones, the last couple episodes or the last season. I mean, the fight scenes were awesome and some of the other stuff, but. I felt like the story really fell flat and I'm afraid that because you're giving them too much free reign and there's not this like kind of tried and true backstory or basics for a lot of the uh, things or the direction that they're going, that we're going to have a lot of like, uh, I can see where they were trying to go with, but that was not a good direction that should not have happened or et cetera, et cetera. I, I don't know if that's something that you guys would feel also. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Like, um, I don't know enough about Marvel to know like what other stories I have left. But I, naively, I do think that there is probably a shitload of stories they could pull from. I feel like we have not even begun to really scratch yeah. any kind of surface. Really, I mean, they've had how many years of doing this? Like, yeah. oh yeah, and we've, I think they've been I writing think the comics since the eighties. Yeah. I think the challenge isn't finding the source material of a Marvel story arc to base it on. It's going to be picking which one out of like the multitude of you know, <laughs> yeah, which one, like which one the, specifically? Yeah, it's <laughs> like I'm sure there are some goofy fucking Marvel heroes that nobody cares gives a shit about, and it's like, can we do a can we do a movie about fucking Modoc. Potato Man? I don't know. Modoc. <laughs> I mean, Patton Oswalt as Modoc. No. Live what what if what if Black <laughs> Widow was a man? What if oh, coming yeah. this summer? Oh yeah, the what if, and we just basically just churn out a bunch of crap where it's what we throw <laughs> stuff on dartboard and, and we'll do a story about that. And I love everything they've hit so far. I'm gonna watch the shit out of that. <laughs> What do you mean everything they've hit so far? It hasn't even started. Yeah, they've already, there's they've zombies, already hinted at there's yeah. there's Black Panther or Star Lord, uh-huh. there's Gamora as, as Thanos, there's <laughs> Ultron as, with the Infinity Stones, there's Howard the Duck, think, there's Captain Britain. There's... I think uh, I think Wait, ben did you have this list written down no somewhere? What Where the hell is that? He's gonna gobble it up. Just shit in my mouth, Marvel. Yeah, I'll it'll, eat it. It'll be it'll be two <laughs> two Marvels, one Ben. Welcome to and, Simpin for Marvel. I'm yeah. your host Ben. I think I think the the current arc, the trajectory of the MCU will like with the existing characters that they have left, or at least the main ones they have left, will may will carry them through phase four, but after that I I don't I don't see what they're gonna be. I don't know how they're possibly going to continue their success in I the same way. I have to remind you that 
this happened recently, but they did recently acquire X Men, so that's a thing. Oh uh, yeah, and oh, also did, Blade oh, is X-Men considered back. part of Phase Four. Yeah, or wait, yeah. But can you really four. picture another Wolverine who's not uh, Hugh Jackman? Ryan Reynolds no, be... as Wolverine <laughs> and, and, and Deadpool. And <laughs> and Deadpool. <laughs> They'll do like Eddie, like you know, Eddie Murphy is playing multiple characters. Uh... <laughs> and he's also <laughs> fucking Magneto all... yeah. and Professor X <laughs> and Cerebro. <laughs> I, I, I hey, like, hey, hey, I'd watch that's a what if movie. Yeah, that's if a what that's if. A what if that every be character it. is played by Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> what if every character was played by Ryan Reynolds? That's that's the TM movie TM. That's our idea. Marvel pay us. <laughs> yes. All I know is, uh, if you are planning on watching Black Widow, stay till the end. For there is a stinger. That's all I'll say. Well, I mean, isn't that kind of given? Who doesn't like, stay to the end in Marvel movies? That's yeah, like a given. I don't. I think there's like there are three sometimes movies people that didn't don't. Happen. Mm-hmm. Was it you? I don't know. <laughs> David, did you not? <laughs> <see> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't make it so obvious. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Uh, is there even a point to doing spoilers at this point? I'm pretty sure most people will end up seeing this thing. Um, I got a bunch of spoilers for that vest. Okay. Wait, all right. Let's go ahead and jump over to the spoiler zone or the pocket zone. For, uh, hey, real quick, I just got to say, you guys are talking, your Ben, you mentioned Letty was talking about the pockets of the vest, and there's like two tiny pockets on that. You can't put anything in those. You don't know that. What happens if there's inside pockets? What happens if there's a tactical yeah, pocket, it's magic in, pocket. The, in the collar area? You know, sometimes they have like hidden pockets. What, it, what as a normal person, what are you putting in a tactical collar pocket? There could be lots of things. There could be, you could be going one to bullet, and you could be. You would be smuggling drugs into a festival. <laughs> I think I've done that with uh, one of my shoes for Is like this, someone else. Hey, th- we're talking about Disney movies here, okay? You can't be talking about that kind of stuff, Ben. You're right. This you're, is me from totally, one bullet. You're totally, totally right. Uh, my producers have alerted me. <laughs> <laughs> this is me from the sound booth, by the way. Uh, yeah, producers have told me that I'm being a poo poo head. Um, <laughs> a poo poo pee pee head. <laughs> All right, what 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 are your vest spoilers? Oh, that was it. The, po- what, the pockets. What, the pockets? Hot pockets. Hot pocket. Do you put it in the microwave with the with the vest on it or do you leave you put it in the microwave well, without the vest? If you want it to be on? crispy, you put the vest on. Or you put it in the toaster without the vest. It's going to be crispy anyways. Well, toaster oven, not a, yeah. I don't think there's a hot pocket that fits in a traditional toaster. You don't know that. Do you, can you say 100% well, think... without any doubt in your mind, with absolute <laughs> certainty, that there is not a toaster that a Hot Pocket cannot can fit into? I guess not. Then because... if it's on the box, it doesn't tell you to put it in a toaster. It's not supposed to go in a toaster. Man, uh, hey, in the Bible, it never says that man was supposed to fly, <laughs> but we did it anyways, all right? He's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> My God, he's right. Uh, a spoiler. I don't know. I guess we might have... It was. I feel like there wasn't really too much to spoil in this movie. It wasn't like there was any grand uh, reveals of anything. Yeah. I, or well, how do you guys feel about the Taskmaster reveal? I mean, is that who Taskmaster was is supposed to be in the Marvel no, universe? No. No. Well, then I don't like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> here it is. Well, especially uh, well. I... Is Taskmaster supposed to be a one arc villain where no. they're now no longer a villain? No, no, she's okay, gonna well, be a part then... of something else. I'm pretty sure with all the other widows that were freed. I I was reading online that there is you know a little bit of an upset with what Taskmaster ended up being, just because Taskmaster is an established villain, and he has somewhat of a persona to him. You know, he's very cocky. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's got that cool ass skull mask. But we get this like helmet instead. But that's a small thing. But yeah. pretty much, we we're not going to be seeing much of Taskmaster anymore. You know, in the fashion that we would want, well, that you know, fans of Taskmaster if, of the comics wanted to see. You know, we don't get to see a yeah. swagger. We don't that's... need to. We don't really get to see him like mimic anyone else and like you know just like talk shit on everyone. We we just see this silent yeah. Taskmaster. It's almost like. Um, Deadpool and X Men, right. or in X Men Origins, you know, yeah. when they sewed his mouth shut. <laughs> right. Yeah, I feel like I don't really know much about Taskmaster, but I definitely felt like 
something was off about their portrayal of Taskmaster. It was like, I, I just seemed to me like what you said, it should have been more, he should have been more talkative or they should have been more talkative or, uh, I don't know, just more involved. But yeah, it, after hearing all that, I definitely am leaning towards not liking what they did. And it, it does seem like in the overall grand scheme of the movie, it, it seemed like for this movie, they're like, um, Okay, we gotta put out a Black Widow movie, but we gotta give her a good villain. Oh shit, who who do we put in? Uh, Taskmaster. <laughs> yeah, left. <laughs> how's how's Taskmaster fit in? Uh, roll some dice. It's a girl that she tried to assassinate. All get right, our, perfect. Get our get our what if board. Throw a dart at it. <laughs> <laughs> See now, this one I not, would have not watched. <laughs> See, so Maybe they're, what they're if they're is trying still gold up right now? Huh? Hmm. What if? No, I I don't know. What if it was Killmonger? That would have been better. Ooh. Not his Taskmaster. That <laughs> what would have been if worthy. Michael B. Jordan didn't die. Oh. Ooh. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Damn. Let's see it. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Uh any other thoughts, guys, before we go ahead and wrap this one up? They better bring back David Harbour. Yeah, I really like everything. Every time he spoke, I was like laughing my ass off. He really stole it. Um, I'm glad they did not just reduce him to Russian man jokes. You know, he, yeah. he had some <laughs> other he had some other good liners to him. You know, I, I really like the whole thing where he was talking about how he beat the shit out of Captain America, and that guy called him out on it. And he's just like he breaks his you arm. Call me, you call me a liar. You, you call me a fucking liar. You know, damn, he that was really fucking stole it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was he was very uh, he was my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, uh, really but like... the one thing I didn't like about it, his character is that, or at least how they what happened in the movie is that I thought like they didn't give him like any kind of like substance. fight fights you know I guess fight substance when he was battling Taskmaster. He just was getting his ass kicked up and down. It was like you're not going to show us like he was even a little bit good. Like, nope. you're just no, going to no, have no, him get his ass kicked. He's just strong. Nope, that's it. He's just strong. I'm, I you guess that would have been a... strong with technique. No, but even just like one, he didn't even get like one good hit in. Like, he didn't do anything. <laughs> he just got his ass kicked. I guess I would have been okay with it. They like, I, I, I felt like the third act is really where it, uh, the movie highlighted its flaws where we have this really great thing going with the family and everything they did was great. It's just that, Oh, we have to focus on the stupid Marvel story here. Let's focus on taskmaster and shit and not give any explanation to anything else. Like I, I thought they were doing a good job when they first introduced, reintroduced his character in the movie where they're showing that he's, he's washed up pretty much, you know, it gave me like very similar, um, Incredibles vibes where Mr. Incredible is just trying to live out his glory days and he's trying to get back into it, but he kind of fucking sucks at it, you know? And but when we get to that point, yeah, it's just like you, you kind of expect it, but at the same time you're like, wait, he kind of sucks though. <laughs> but I don't think they hammered that in very well, so it just ended up being a very pathetic fight, and you're just like, Why the fuck is Taskmaster beating on him? He's a super soldier. Why does this stuff hurt him? Nothing's yeah, supposed to hurt him. He's basically Captain America for he Russia. Is. Captain yeah. Russia. The cap the Crimson Comrade Dynamo. Russia. <laughs> Comrade Russia. <laughs> that that was I was disappointed by that part. Mm -hmm. Uh not to David his perform not to his character's fault, but uh mm -hmm. to whoever wrote whoever wrote that fight scene, that's their fault. We need the Russian Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is slightly <laughs> slightly awesome. lesser quality. <laughs> We've got all my, kind of my Iron Man suit constantly break. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I, in I the Ru Mother from the Russia, VW bug. <laughs> we need the Captain Russia and Iron <laughs> Metal Metal Man. Iron Curtain. Iron Curtain. <laughs> the Iron Curtain. <laughs> I make what? suit out you of dress curtain. up like ghost. <laughs> oh, that'd be so great if there, Adidas if there was like a Russian knockoff. <laughs> you know, I did see I did see this meme, I'll send it to you Black guys later Bear. if you can find it, where it's like 
it's it's basically a bunch of marvel heroes but they're just like a bunch of russian weird russian people and it's like <laughs> it's like a uh, uh narrated like which character which person is which character and like this goofy like drunk russian accent so <laughs> see i would watch that i would totally watch <laughs> is it called the winter guard i don't know no, it's just like a it's just, it's the meme. It's not like a yeah. actual produ- produced produced oh, thing. But actually, yeah, there is the a Marvel, Marvel comic. Yeah. No, there is a Marvel comic called The Winter Guard. It's a fictional team of Russian superheroes pairing in Marvel. They were being the Russians' answer to the Avengers. Uh, the current team is Ursa Major, is a bear, Crimson oh, really? Dynamo. F- Five, uh huh. That's the Iron Man. Wait, his name is actually Crimson Dynamo. <laughs> yes, Crimson Dynamo number oh. five or V. So that was Dark actual- Star Red Guardian is there as well. Uh, Vostok is a robot with powers to control machines, also known as Sputnik. Chernobog, the Slavic god of chaos and night. Piran, the Slavic god of Thunder and Lightning, and Red Widow. Wait, so that hmm. jab that That's Florence Pooh made at uh, David Harbour, where she's like, no one cares about your the fucking Crimson Dynamo. Like, that she, that was but, actually a reference then, right? Like, it was, it was also correct. a joke. But, that, but that is a reference like, and a joke. Yeah, and you're just like, it's actually the Red Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> God, <clears throat> God it would be great. This would be great if they were to do a film about this. Yes, more Re- David Harbour, please. Yes, please. At, in the Winter Guard, <laughs> this this time he means business. All right, David Harbour, we right. need you to come back with the shooting, but we need you to add forty pounds of slab. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. I never. So this way, it's really you. hard for you to fit into the pants. <laughs> yeah, but they they were really good together. Chemistry between the four of them was really really good. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, guys, any other thoughts before we go ahead and wrap this one up? Wrap that shit up, B. All right, here we go. So, all right, guys, join us next week as we cover for our movie of the week, Escape Room Tournament (laughs) of Champions. None of us have seen the previous movie, so this should be fun (laughs) and interesting. Um it's by majority vote or mostly just by Ben's vote. But guys, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Google, and Apple Podcasts. And also don't forget to tune us, tune in on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash dose and a half Cinco's. Right? Yeah, yeah. I did it. Okay. Um, as always, I've been your host, David. I'm Stuart. Over <laughs> don't forget to uh, wash your hands don't forget to tip your reiki master stay safe out there we'll see you guys next week uh have a good one okay bye, bye.